watching and listening to Bishop Brothers, a safe space where real issues being dealt with by real people are brought forth and discussed. Every week, the fire of love is lit as two 21st century bishops share the first century church message. Join and engage in the conversation, featuring grassroots interviews, book reviews, and God-inspired commentary. Here are your hosts, Aaron and John, Bishop and Bishop, Chief and Chief. But above all, they are brothers. Welcome aboard. Hey, yes. hey, Sonny. hey yes. <laughs> John Daniel D from Sunny Washington. What's the, what's the temperature there? Oh, we're at we're sitting at about 26 right now. So snow everywhere. Uh, yes. the, <laughs> what was the temperature there? Uh, it was t- well, it was 26 this morning. I think it got up to about I don't know 30. I think 33 is the high today. Oh wow! So yeah, it's gonna stay cold and it's been snowing. Of course, I started to go to work though. You know, the Navy doesn't really care what the temperature <laughs> is. No, long long as you can make it there, you they they gonna they gonna be you're gonna be working. But that's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I was laughing at the picture you sent to out three. I'm like, boy, he looks cold, man. <laughs> You made, me shiver. <laughs> you, made, you made me shiver looking at that picture. Yeah. Uh, we're excited about all who joined us live here on Facebook. Well, I'll tell you, you better, you better, you better lock us in on uh, YouTube. We are uh, switching to YouTube real soon here. We're going to be on um, our Bishop Brothers channel on YouTube mm-hmm. starting in the next few, in a few weeks. We uh, have been telling you that uh, we're going to that channel. So please subscribe to Bishop Brothers on YouTube. We're going to put a link uh in, in, a, in the comments uh, after this show, so make sure to subscribe to that. But we decided to be here on Facebook. And how you like our new backgrounds? We got our hey, yeah, trying to get our backgrounds working. We told you at the first year we're gonna be upgrading some things, so now we got the backgrounds working. So we're trying to. Yeah. We're gonna. You see the seals, his seal, my seal, and of course the Bishop Brothers logo uh, behind you. So we we truly excited about what's going on and uh, what we're doing, and just keep moving forward and growing and. Well, we have a heavy, heavy, heavy lifting subject tonight. Uh, but you know, we don't we don't avoid anything. We talk about it, we deal with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is what it is. The society of the world we live in, the kingdom we live in, the moment the momentous issue of war and peace. How do we deal with it from a theological basis, a personal basis, your conscience? Uh, there's so much tied into war. Um, and when you talk when you talk about war, it's nothing we take lightly. Uh, just, just so you know, most of you should know uh, who are our, our regular audience. That uh, uh, Bishop G is actually serving active duty in military, and I retired seven years ago from active duty military service. So it's something we know we see them close and personal. Something we have to deal with. Uh, definitely not nothing to joke about, uh, play with, uh, in any sort of way. It is it is an issue that uh, affects all our lives. So mm-hmm. we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, mental issues of war. I'll let you kick it off. Yeah. Yeah. So like we were talking about earlier before we came on, I think one of the things that makes us a uh, uh, pretty unique, well qualified to talk about this because we, we both lived it, but what's, what's unique about us is the way we attack things. Uh, I come from a, a high academic um, theological standpoint as if someone that uh, you, if you went to seminary that you, you'd get someone that talks like me. Uh, and if you wanted a, a real, you know, a real, conversation over coffee bishop williams would probably be your guy um so i think that makes it unique so you'll get to hear two uh two sides of this coin today but i think what you'll see is that and and we do these separate we we don't uh we don't collaborate on our notes i think i think it makes for a better show uh and and it also shows just how much even though we come from very different backgrounds how much alike we really are Um, so I, i love that but to get started on this I think the first thing that uh, that I usually have to point out to people when I get into this conversation over coffee or at work is God, God is not a God of war. Right. God is a God of justice. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes, and when you look in the Old Testament, you will find more, a lot of times, the search for justice can sometimes end in armed conflict. <clears throat> so, Taking it seriously by by quoting a few verses that seem, you know, it's irritating to me when people, you know, like to throw out a couple of verses, but they don't want to talk about the context of the verses. Mm-hmm. Uh, typically, when we're talking about war, you'll hear a lot of either the Old Testament or Revelation. 
It's usually what you get. And then one of the big ones you'll get is this discussion of something Jesus says in Matthew about wars and rumors of wars. And I want to break that down as well. Um, but let's start, let's start, let's start with a couple of these verses. So if you look in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 20, there's, there's God's instructions about war. It says, if a city does not accept Israel's offer of peace and open its gates, then when the Lord your God delivers it unto your hand, put to the sword all the men in it. That's uh, Deuteronomy 20, 13. With regard to other cities, if you look in verse 16, sometimes he even says, do not leave anything that breathes. <clears throat> so if you were just to look at that verse, you, you might go, well, Bishop John, God is a God of war. I mean, not only is he a God of war, he's a God of total war. Um, if you recall uh, the story of Jericho with the walls coming, tumbling down, and then the Israelites destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, uh, man, woman, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys uh, from Joshua 621. Uh, this seems very brutal and vindictive. Uh, consider Joshua 1120, for it was the Lord himself who hardened their hearts to wage war against Israel so that he might destroy them totally, exterminating them without mercy, as the Lord had commanded Moses. From our 21st century point of view, we can ask, well, first, what good was accomplished by annihilation? Mm. And this is a, this is a very, it's, it's heavy. Um, but there's clearly another side to God as well. Uh, the prophet Ezekiel does not spare the wicked in his denunciations, he also records God's words of grace. He says, if a wicked man turns away from all the sins he has committed and keeps all the decrees and does what is just and right, he will surely live. He will not die. Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the sovereign Lord? Rather, I am not pleased when they turn from their ways and live. And he goes on in verse 32, for I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent and live. So what we're seeing here from the Old Testament point of view we are seeing a linkage of conflict to justice. So what you what you can what you can get out of that is that God is a God of justice. He will see justice served, and there are some there's some pretty high costs to justice. We don't have to look any farther than our own history to see. Just because you're on the side of justice doesn't mean you're on the side of safety. Right. Pe people seeking justice have lost their lives. Yes. In this country and other countries, yeah. um, but justice will be done. But all all these descriptions of God, what we can look at, what we can get from it, is He's unwavering in His retribution on evil, though He takes no delight in the harm. Uh, also, unwavering, He's also unwavering in His love and encouragement towards those hearts that turn towards Him. Mm -hmm. So God's obvious desire is that sinners should repent and live. But there comes a point where evil is finally intolerable and, and does get wiped out in the Old Testament. Now, I keep, I keep saying Old Testament because what you, what you end up seeing here is if you're only going to the Old Testament for these answers, you know, what about war? How do I feel about war? Um, you're, you're missing out a huge part of what it is to be Christian. One, you have to understand that, that these, these cords of combat, these are 2,000-year-old, and in some case 3,000-year-old, reasons to go to war. Right. It's also a, a covenant to go. <laughs> we, don't, we don't operate under the same covenant in which these conflicts occurred. Right? right. Now, what does that mean for us as, as the modern Christian? What it means for us is... It's not a rule book on how to conduct war. What it is, is it's it's for us to see that God is a just God and he will see justice served. No matter the cost, God is a just God. Right. Now, so it's compelling. So uh, 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. The biggest issue I have with, with people who, who will run with the Old Testament is they'll be very quick. Well, the old, in the Old Testament, you know, I mean, God was a God of war. No. God is a God of justice. Mm -hmm. 
you have to understand that this is seen as it can be seen as retribution in its historical setting. Mm -hmm. uh, the spread of wickedness was so pervasive, uh, immorality, degradation, bar barbarity uh, invaded every facet of the Old Testament lifestyle. Children were sacrificed to pagan gods. Male and female prostitution took place in the temple as part of religious rites. Idol worship was rife. Society was wholly contaminated. The evil was contiguous and God's people were in danger of being infected as well. God's awesome judgment was finally unleashed. And what you see in, in its finality, you don't see God punishing the world. Who does he punish? He jumps all over Israel. Right. right? So from the Old Testament, what you can glean about, about war is God is not a God of war. God is a God of justice. But war is especially uh, war for empire is never spoken of in the old testament there's only one instance of um god's people being allowed to take land and that was when they took the land that was promised to them yeah after that time most of israel's wars were defensive wars and the times that they did decide to go to war with other other nations it didn't end well you know if you look at uh balak and balaam where they're asking for his for 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 God's blessing to go to war, he won't give it, right. right? Because in order to go to war with God's blessing, there are very very specific things, especially in an offensive war. Right. Okay, in a defensive war, it's a little different. So you have to understand it in its historical setting. So that spread of wickedness was was a, a lot of times a reason because there was a restoration of justice that was needed. We also have to understand, really, that this was under the Old Covenant. Mm -hmm. Under the New Covenant of Jesus Christ, this would not be allowed. Because it's not necessary anymore. Right. Now let's jump to the New Testament. Typically, when we talk about war, you typically have uh, three attitudes, I would say. Uh, and the Christians that I've dealt with and people that I've dealt with. So first, you have what people would call the doves. Mm-hmm. You know, then you have people, you have people that would be called hawks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have a third group called the Atlasters. Mm. Okay. So you have the doves, pacifists who are opposed to all war and all violence. Um, I, me and many others have a lot of sympathy for this position. Uh, it coincides with the biblical image of heaven. Uh, it's based on peace, uh, harmony, love. Who could ask for that? Who, who could who could speak against that? Um, these are the people who will typically take that verse. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Uh, nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. It's out of Isaiah 2, verse 4. Uh, the Prince of Peace will usher in the time when um, the wolf will live with the lamb, Isaiah eleven six. 6. That, however, is exactly... Um, that can be a fatal flaw in the in, in a purely dove position mm -hmm. is that sometimes um, you can allow the desire to not want to be in conflict. And I'm not speaking just of, of war, but conflict in general. Sometimes you will avoid that conflict to keep the status quo. Mm -hmm. And that's not good either. Um, Jesus did not stay quiet to keep the status quo. Right. Right. In being in tune as a God of justice, that's what he did. And, and as usual, it cost him his life, mm -hmm. right? Just like most, uh, most of those who seek justice aren't doves, right? A lot of people think, well, if, you, if, you're, if you're not interested in going to war, you must be weak or you must be a dove. It's not necessarily true, mm -hmm. right? The conditions need to be correct, mm -hmm. okay? So pacifism... Um, the only issue I have with someone who, who who's only a pacifist, uh, sometimes it fails to take seriously the sinfulness of humans. Uh, monsters do exist. I uh, certainly do. And, and uh, they don't all wear turbans. You know, <laughs> some of them look like me. Yes. Um, yeah. Trust me. I mean, I have, I have a family that came from Northern Ireland. They all look like me. Uh, and there's some pretty horrible people in the world today we're all capable of doing real harm to our neighbor and sometimes because of our sinful nature we're not capable of constraining that and so the the need for law and order and good government 
um, and and sometimes for protection, war sometimes is necessary. <clears throat> However, that runs in contrast to that second attitude, opposite the dove, the war hawk or the hawk. This is a person who always who's always looking for a fight, always looking for controversy, always looking for use of force to get their way. Um, while some might be sympathetic uh, with the dove, uh, there's typically little or no sympathy for the man of violence. Uh, the scriptures say, the Lord hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. It's pretty clear. That's Psalms 11.5. Human anger does not produce the righteousness of God's desires, James 1.20. That right there is so important. Let me repeat that. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. When we start talking about war and legitimate wars and biblical wars, I don't I don't like it when people say use the term biblical wars. Mm -hmm. Justice is biblical, love is biblical, peace is biblical. Mm -hmm. This may come as a shock to you, but war is not biblical. It's not a it's not a tool that we're supposed to use to get our way or to take things. Um, and that's the point here. That's the point James is trying to make. When man has anger and man decides to go to war, you don't get to pick God's side mm -hmm. when, when, when man decides to do that. Um, that's for the Lord to decide because the Lord will always be on the side of justice. justice yeah. He's always going to be on the side of justice. So if you go to war and your war is not just, God is not on your side. Okay, so do, it says, do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. It's out of Proverbs 3. Nowhere in the Bible do those who love violence get God's approval. Let me say that again. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible do those who love violence get God's approval. Those who are pleased, thrilled, or excited about war, you need repentance. Yeah. There, it, it, is, it is what you are saying... If that's what you want, uh, you're completely out of step with God. Okay, um, and I'll I'll say this from a personal: you'll never see. I wouldn't say never. I haven't all I haven't always felt this way, but I, you know, very. I don't comment on these things, especially in, in current events, because of the fact that I'm a sailor and and I do work for the government. I don't I don't get involved because it's not it's not my place. Um, but I'm excited for others to get involved and say their piece. I love hearing what everybody has to say but more than that war is not a joke to me <laughs> um you know i i have friends that i have friends that left body parts in iraq i have friends that you know have left body parts in the ocean so and you know, to, under no circumstances is a joke. i don't care <laughs> who you are i don't care what you meant to say mm -hmm. I, i'm trying to cut you off under no, no circumstances. please no circumstances I, and i'll I said to anybody, I don't care who you are, what title you hold, please, no. Yeah, please, so, please don't make light of it. No. Um, and no kind of you, way. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the fact that you're fighting a war doesn't make you right or wrong, but desiring war is wrong. That the Bible is absolutely clear on that. And then you have this third attitude of the at last, right? At last, we have to act. Uh, this position kind of, so people who hold this position, it's very important to remember that God is not on one side in a war. He's not utterly disinterested in what we're doing, but neither does he identify completely with any side. Okay, wars, this, and this is important, especially under the new covenant, wars are ours. We wage war. God is not waging war. Not like this, Right? Wars are ours, not his. Our wars cannot be fought in the name of God. We cannot do that as Christians. We do not fight wars in the name of God. What happens when you start to fight wars in the name of God is you get what's happened in our past as Christians. You get the Crusades. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's what you get in open conflict. And then what you get in, in society is things like the Salem Witch Trials. Where oh you know a woman spoke out of turn so they drown her because she's clearly a witch. You know that's what you, you got to be careful. That is not God's not disinterested. Not he's not disinterested, 
but he's not interested in being on your side just because you're a Christian. Furthermore, it's worth reminding ourselves to keep listening to others and weighing the costs and benefits of a war. For as the Bible teaches, surely you need guidance to wage war. And victory is won through many advisors. That's Proverbs 24, 6. Or Jesus, so Jesus said, or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while others are still a long way off and will ask for the terms of peace. As Christians, we, we are mandated from our God to seek the terms of peace, but not at the cost of justice. You understand what I mean? You, we should seek peace. We should all, whenever possible, we should seek peace with our neighbors, um, but not at the cost of justice. But that justice isn't decided by a government. What is just is not decided like that for the Christian. For the Christian, what is just is decided by God. Right. And what we have in terms of revelation of that is found in Scripture. Okay? So in listening to advisors and weighing options, it's important to remember. Um, it's very important to remember just because it's your justice or you feel a certain way. And this goes all the way back to some of the things we've talked about in past shows. Feelings will get you in trouble. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to go to war. I mm -hmm. feel like I've been slighted. I feel like I have to engage in conflict or even worse, man, I really shouldn't say nothing. Cause if I open my mouth, I'm going to get it too. Right. There's a very narrow, that's why it's called the narrow path. Mm -hmm. There's a very narrow path for war. And as Christians, we have to seek that path. It's not optional. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, man, that's, that's good. You know, I was, I've been really, since uh, you know, the events of recent uh, events happened, I've been really thinking about this subject again. We have to deal with it. The reason why we have to deal with it is because, you know, lives are at risk. And what greater call does a man or woman of God has to do than, than to lift your voice for the voices, lift your voice for uh, people that um, are affected by these decisions of men and women, uh, mm -hmm. that's sort of adults. And we're talking about this issue, I, I, I want to see where to begin, how to start, and, and how you deal with this issue. Because since, since Adam and Eve, since the history of mankind, we, we struggle with this issue of war. And a, a lot of times, and what I really think, I mean, we, we need to define things better, understand what war is and what it's not. Because um, a lot of times we lump things in together, and really they're different. They're different things. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I, I was thinking about this, and I, I was resting in my rest. That's how I get most things. I don't get most things if I get what God dropped in my spirit. Uh, one of the speeches that one of the all-time great speeches that I love and, you, and, and in the speech that I'm going to read to you to get your context what I'm trying to say about war is you're going to see a person who happened to be a president struggling with this with this momentous issue of war what, what I want to get across now that this is a very serious topic and mm. uh, we, we struggle with it and, and we, we, we want to take sides and we want to know where God stands with the true the true person, the true person with the heart of God always wants to know where God stands. And you talked about justice. God always stands with justice. And this is what we struggle with. Should I stand with country? Should I stand with my group? Should I stand with the Irish? Should I stand with the black? Should I stand with this? Where and is this issue, the struggle of uh, and and history, uh, because we have recorded history, we had a thoughts and amusing of, of the president, 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln after the greatest war in our history, and it's in many, many calls his greatest speech, his second inaugural address. And I'm gonna read this speech because you you get a picture into his mind and what he's thinking about this, this what just happened, what the nation had just been through, uh, what what caused it. And and he he's, he has a quote in here that I think is bringing home, really we need a really good discussion going, going in Mm -hmm. of what we do constantly with this this book that we call the bible uh we do it constantly and this is the worst issue to do it with uh because of what the effects it has on us so this is a uh, i'm gonna read that this is his this is sync we went to a play as you know uh we have we have uh we have season tickets to the play and we go every month 
And we went pretty, to see I'm pretty Miss, jealous about that, by the way. <laughs> and we went to see Miss Saigon this last mm -hmm. Friday night. Miss Saigon. And here was one of the one of the things that a per person singing said. He said, the war may be over, but it never ends. Hmm. Mm. Think about that. The wow. war may be over, but it never ends. Mm. And, and when you think about that, this is why you can't joke about this subject. This is why you cannot in no kind of way. And no, well, I, I mean, any, well, I didn't mean that. No, you need to recognize and understand care who you are, that this subject is nothing you don't send a meme about, you don't make any slight statement over because the war may be over, but it never ends. Mm -hmm. Lincoln's second inaugural address, he said this here, he says, um, I want to read the, the most of it because I'm going to get to a certain point. I want to get you his mind. So he said, at the second appearance, to take the oath, of, the oath of the presidential office, there is a less occasion for extended address than there was at the first. Then a statement somewhat in detail, of course, to be pursued seeming fitting and proper. Now the expiration of four years during which public declarations have been constantly called forth on every point and phase of the great contest, which not which still absorbs the attention and grows the energies of the nation. Little that is new could be presented. The progress of our arms upon which all else chiefly depends is as well known to the public as to myself and is, I trust, reasonably satisfactorily encouraging to all. But high hope for the future, no prediction in regard to be ventured. On the occasion, on the occasion corresponding to this four years ago, all thoughts were anxious directed to an impending civil war. All dreaded it, all sought to avert it. While the inaugural address has been delivered from this place devoted altogether to saving the union without war, the insurgent agents were in the city seeking to destroy it without war, seeking to dissolve the union and divide effects by negotiation. Both parties depreciated war, but one of them would make war rather than let the nation survive, and the other would accept war rather than to let it perish, and the war came. He goes on to say, one eighth of the whole population was colored slaves, not, not distributed generally over the Union, but localized in the southern part of it. These slaves constituted a peculiar and powerful interest. All knew that this was interest was somehow the cause of the war. To strengthen, perpetuate, and extend this interest was the object for which the insurgents would rend the Union even by war, while mm -hmm. the government claimed no right to do more than to restrict the territory enlargement of it. Neither party expected the war, the magnitude and duration which is already attained. Neither anticipated that the cause of the conflict may cease or even before the conflict itself should, should cease. Each looked for easier trump triumph and result that's fundamental outstanding. Now, listen to these words. Both read from the same Bible and pray to the same God and invokes his aid against the other. It may seem strange that any man should dare to ask a just God's assistance in wringing their bread from the sweat of other men's faces. But let us not judge, not that we be not judged. The prayers of both could not be answered. There is a justice. And you're hearing a man who, who dealt with the most, the greatest, the, the greatest tragedy in this nation history. You hear him say, we're both reading the same Bible. We're both praying to the same God. Mm -hmm. It makes to your point, God makes a decision and God is always on, gonna be on the side of the just. God is always gonna be on the side of the, the people who are doing right. He, he does not endorse any war. He does not endorse your wars. Like you said, he does not endorse people war, but he's, if you wanna know where God is, he's always gonna be on the side of the person seeking, the, the people seeking justice. And sometimes that might not be your side. He said, you hear sure. wars and rumors of wars, nations shall rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, and found mm -hmm. earthquake and not He said, but it, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they, sh they will be called the children of God. That's so true. for the Christian, uh, for the believer, how where the struggle is, is putting on the soldier's gear a moral opposite than carrying one's cross? Can I carry the gear of my country and the cross of Jesus at the same time. 
you know, per perpetual war for a perpetual peace is an illusion. I mean, and 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 we, and we when we think about this, and we talk about pacifism, when you look at the word peacemaker, peacemaker is not a pacifist. Peacemakers is is saying that we're not war makers. Peacemakers like the like a war maker like you broke down. A war maker seeks to seek war. A peacemakers work everything that they can to seek peace. Right, and sometimes they fail, but they, but blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the children of God. Why? To your point, God always wants peace. Mm -hmm. Men make war. God's objective, God's mission, God's focus, God's desire is always for men to have peace. Even when Jesus was being taken to be crucified, and Peter cut off the soldier's ear, Jesus healed it mm -hmm. and said, "Put down your sword." He said. I shall drink from the cup that my father told me to do. In that situation of violence, he made peace. He always seek peace. And here is what I really want to, I want to talk about, the data behind. A lot of times when we talk about war, when we're talking about uh, the, the subject, we focus on abstract things, mm -hmm. you know, just war. You know, what, what war, what, what does that mean? Where war, it, it, it means lives. When, when, you, when you look like at the Vietnam War, 58,000 Americans were killed during the, the Vietnam War. In, in Afghanistan, it was 31,000 civilian deaths killed during the, the Afghanistan War. It was 29,000 civilians wounded. We look at the Iraq, the, the Iraq War, it was 4,424 total deaths killed in action and non -style. 31,000 wounded in his action as a result of the, uh, of the war. And then we talk about the veteran affairs. So when we talk about what is war, war is rape, war is torture, war is displacement, war is murder, war is environmental destruction, war is starvation, war is sickness, war is evil. And we know as a believer, God has nothing, to, nothing at all to do with it. When you talk about war, why you shouldn't be why you shouldn't laugh about it or do any crazy memes about it or, or anyway you got to understand people are being affected after the after deployment after just an employment even people who hadn't seen war 12.5 percent of, of veterans today john mean you're a veteran 12.5 mm -hmm. of those veterans are suffering from what we call ptsd back in the day they kept having flashbacks and things like that what we just what is diagnosed now is ptsd 12 percent mm -hmm. of solar sages emory who fought who fight these wars are suffering from ptsd we talk about war you want to play with it you think it's a game in 2017 6139 veterans committed suicide that was an increase of 129 in 2016. we we talk about this thing called war veterans that commit suicide in 2017 70 percent of those veterans use a use a firearm in those those suicides you know what the average age was of, of the veterans committing suicide 58 55 to 74 veterans committing suicide so when you talk about this subject we're talking about life we're talking about people not only that when they go to fight the war and they come back from the war the same country that is so eagerly and so so recklessly in many cases so to send them to war you don't even take care of the people who have fought the war rich it's rich man's war poor man's blood and so when you talk about war god is not endorsing endorsing this god is not endorsing your what god war when when you get to the result of war it is a sinful failure of negotiation. It's a sinful failure of humanity working things out. It's a sinful failure of me. If me and Bishop and not, if John and Aaron have to go to war, have to fight, have to get into a fight right now, we have failed as leaders. We have failed as men. We have failed as husbands. We have failed as human beings because we couldn't come together and work this thing out. And so now we got to go to war and try to kill one. It is a failure. War, no, is no getting around it. War is a failure. That's what Lincoln was saying. Both praying to the same God, both asking for his 
blessings both are praying to the same god both reading the same bible both doing this so where we feel that nobody is listening and doing what god says because everybody is looking as you said bishop g for god's justification in the word of god instead of god saying you know what y'all need to work this thing right instead of looking for justification we tend to go to war because we know god's on our side we know that god's but Jesus said, he said, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the people who want, who need, who should probably go to war, but they work, they work, they work, they work, they work, and they work, and they work, and they work, and they, instead of going to war, they find peace. So what Jesus is saying, what I, I declare, what I say, Jesus called the church to be a community of peacemakers, a, to, to, to make peace in, in the times when people we should go to war. We're called to be peacemakers, not not war makers, and that's what life's about. And that's why Jesus was 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 saying that to us. And so the question is, why are peacemakers so aware? And a peacemaker is not a pacifist, because a peacemaker understands that at some point that you that that uh, using force is necessary. I'll give you an example. I'm in my home. If a person <laughs> comes to this home, mm -hmm. right, and comes in here and violently, violently attacks my family, God, Jesus is not telling me, "Bless are the peacemakers," but says, "And and let them people, let that person, let them people destroy my wife, destroy my children, destroy my home." That's not a peace. That's that's what not what he's saying. Mm -hmm. See, I can stand in defense. See, we got the rule. See, if I beat you down if i take you out in that instance i'm not making war ain't got nobody you know missing i'm not making war i am in defense see we got to get the language right we got to get the words right to understand right. a lot of times what we call war when we, we when there was a holocaust going on so ain't got nobody now mm -hmm. we went to uh -oh. war to end the holocaust because people innocent people we're getting killed by a nation gone mad. And so we went to war to protect the innocence and things like that. So we were trying to defend what evil was doing. So therefore, when you look at the word of God, you can see clearly, to my justice, right? You can see clearly in an instance who's the side God is on because 6 million people were being murdered, raped, I went through it. Mur war is torture. War is rape. War is the displacement. War is is hell. Mm -hmm. I checked the Holocaust. If you don't believe me. It's all that and more. War is environmental disaster. And so, when we are in defense of justice, when we're in defense of the innocent, when we're in defense of of mankind, we're not making war. We are doing what God said because no different than a person coming to my house right now to not. To, I don't, I'm supposed to sit down and let them destroy my family. That's why I'm not a pacifist. I'm a peacemaker. But if you put me in a position where I have to defend my life and my family's life, God has called me to do that. So mm -hmm. don't get it twisted. But I'm not making war still. See, when I'm, when I'm making war, I'm trying to get a justification for what I want. And then in this, in many cases, we try to get a lot, God to go along with our justification. So we, mm -hmm. we have to really understand um what peacemaking is peacemaking has been tied into pacism pacifism but it's not because god god said he is a he is the prince of peace and so therefore when we talk about peacemaking the reason why it's so rare rare and i'll let you come back the reason why it's so rare is because peacemaking is not profitable that's right War making is very profitable a lot of people benefit a lot of people, a lot of companies benefit. A lot of war is big business. Mm -hmm. Peacemaking, the, the troops stay home. And peacemaking, yeah. the troops don't go deploy. And peacemaking, the, the, the bullets aren't flying so you don't have to make more bullets. And peacemaking, the gear is not being used up. And peacemaking, you got different. And so when war, you got to, when we think about war, we have to understand what's the motive for war because in this in the world case america we have no jurisdiction on god lincoln told us both the north and south were praying to the same god 
both were reading from the same Bible. Both were saying that God, our side is more virtuous than the other side. Mm -hmm. But in the end, we know somebody was right and somebody was wrong. And in America, we have no jurisdiction on God, that God is always on our side, that God is, we're, we're always just. We have to own that. We, we have to own the fact that really, when you talk about war, since the American Revolution, we've been a nation in perpetual war. For the last 20 years, the, people talk about war, doing this World War III stuff. We, we've, war has been going on. Wake up. War has been going on as we speak. You know, we have troops deployed. We, we're, we're around the nation. We're, we're doing things. Mm -hmm. And so in America, the question for us, when, when does it stop? I mean, 20 years, the suffering, when, when I go to the VA, when I go, when I, when I go and we ride down, I remember my wife was on the base the other day and we ride around and you see these young kids with no legs. They went, they went to these places with their legs, they came back without them. This is uh, war, and I'll quote this, should be the last of the last of the last resort. When mm. we go to war, we everybody loses. We've all failed. God is not pleased. God is not taking sides. Mm -hmm. And we have to own that. That's right. Amen. Uh, Bishop Bishop Smith had a really good question. Uh, he said, what about when Jesus said that uh, people would be saying peace, but there would be no peace? Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a good that's a good point. Thank you, Bishop, for bringing that up. Uh, that's that's definitely a theological concept that, uh, that Jesus was make he's, he's making the point now Jesus said there that people were saying peace but there would be no peace um, Jesus himself is not saying uh, that he does not want peace what he's saying is is in, in humanity's fallen state we have a real hard time with peace mm -hmm. we don't uh, we don't do well in peace believe it or mm -hmm. not we don't uh, in our in our fallen nature so Jesus is, is almost kind of stating an obvious thing. Uh, when he's saying, you know, people are, people are going to say they want peace, but in reality, they don't want peace and there's not going to be peace. Mm -hmm. And it actually kind of brings me into this, uh, this Matthew 24. So I've heard this thrown, this has been thrown at me a couple times about, you know, well, why are you surprised there's war in, in the Bible says there's going to be war. Uh, Matthew 24 uh, verse four says this, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Now in the, uh, and I do believe there are still people that follow this tradition even now. Uh, but what I, there, there is a, there is a form of Christianity that actually believes that they they kind of want to get these wars started so that the end can begin. Mm. They you know their their concept is well if we start the wars, right the end of the world it'll start it'll perpetuate the end of the world. Well, number one, you're not God. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't get to decide when the end of the world is. That's that's number one. What what you do has no bearing on God timing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I think Jesus, what Jesus was saying here was, yes, there are going to be wars because humans are not good at peace, mm -hmm. but we're really good at making war. Mm -hmm. um, he said that, you know, there's not going to be, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to see wars and you're going to, there's going to be rumors of wars. But he says, see to it, you are not alarmed. The end is still to come. These wars don't perpetuate the end. Mm -hmm. All he's saying is these are birth pains, right? He says that later. He says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. So tying war to the end of the world is unbiblical. Mm -hmm. tying, tying war to a cause is a possibility. But I just want to make sure, because some people might hear this from some pulpits, that these wars are, they're the, they mean that the end is coming. And that, that's not true. Uh, it's very, I think it's very dangerous for any believer to focus on the end. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm so tired of defending Genesis and Revelation, but we don't want to talk about the Beatitudes. We don't want to talk about helping our neighbor. We want to know how it was created and how it's going to end, but we certainly don't want to feed the man down the street. Mm -hmm. So we as Christians have to be very careful, especially in, in positions of leadership, we have to be very careful with this attitude of, well, you know, it's we're living in the end times. You don't know that. 
Mm -hmm. You do not know that. People have been saying that we're living in the end times since the writing of the Bible. <laughs> the, the reality is we simply don't know. And to perpetuate the attitude of, well, it's the end, so we'll just, you know, what does that end up perpetuating? Well, we stop feeding people. We stop taking care of people. We start focusing so far in the future, we forget our man right to our right and, and our left. And, and people go hungry because of our theology. Be and, 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 that, and that's fear peddling. People, people, no, nobody wants to die. Like right. Jesus said clearly, he said, no man knows the day or the hour that, that God has placed, the Father has left in his hand. Mm -hmm. That's his decision. That's his decision totally. And so when you talk about that, that that's just fear mongering. That's just to keep a, uh, a group of people uh, tied to you in fear because, you know, end times coming, we reading all these signs and things like that. Jesus, Jesus told this thing for our comfort, not our, not our fear. So what the word Jesus said, if you, if you really want to break it down, what Jesus was saying, what, what this should always remind you of is what Jesus said when he taught him to pray. He, he, he said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. He said, our father, which are in heaven. And, and he said, my kingdom come, my will be done. And that's the point. This is your hope. Your hope is you, un the note is you understand whether it's tomorrow, there are 20,000 years from now. The, my kingdom come, thy will be done. This is not the eternal kingdom of God. America, Iran, Iraq, China, Jamaica, whatever. This, this earth is not the eternal kingdom of God. And that should bring you peace because you know everything is temporal anyway. It's not mm -hmm. in a man's hand. So, but it's, it's the kingdom to come. That's why I said, blessed are the peacemakers, they should be called the sons of God. And, mm -hmm. they, and they're going to be on the sons of God. See, I understand and know, I don't have no fear of this world because everything here is temporary. Everything, it's going to burn up. It's going to go away. It's, it's, it's not going to be here. And But nobody wants to die, so they start this fear mind. Well, this is like, this war, in all war, stuff like that. No, this, this is what you to say, focus on the kingdom of God and focus on always working work the believer as Jesus did should always work to make peace to be a peacemaker peacemaker is not being a peacekeeper peacemaker is different between peacekeeping peacemakers force they they focus they do what we're doing now they preach peace there's a different way we don't have to we didn't we didn't have to have a civil war we didn't have to have a world war ii we didn't have to have World War I. We didn't have to have a Vietnam War. We didn't have to have our Iraq War. People say, no, we did not. That's the that we see. That's the that's the sell. Well, we have to go to war. We have, no, no, we we that's what we do. We don't have to. It's a failure to negotiate. It's it's a failure in working through things. So what we do, we go beast mode. We go mm -hmm. just animalistic. So okay, Kane. Abel, okay, you can't, can't Abel, and then they can't. So, no, I'm gonna kill you. I'm not gonna work. I'm not gonna talk to you, Abel, and find out, hey, how did you come to God? How did you approach him? How can I get better? No, I'm gonna kill you because mm -hmm. now I'm mad. So, violence. And that's what we do. We run to violence to solve our problem because we don't want to talk. We don't want to negotiate. We don't want to talk to anybody. We don't. We don't want. We can't talk to these people. We can't talk to those people. And so we get caught up in this vicious cycle of, oh, well, we we can't we can't make peace because war is profitable. We we want to we want to. And then uh, these people that you're talking about, they, they get people all riled up in, in fear. And so you're looking for some utopian. Uh, situation to happen mm -hmm. that you have no, as you said, you have nothing to do with happening. Happening, and so you just as worse because you're preaching us, you're preaching a lie too, because you got people looking for something because the scripture says something that Jesus he didn't give you no time stamp, mm -hmm. he didn't give you no date. What he told right. you was this is this decision. I'm just showing you the signs. I'm, I'm just showing you what to look for. You 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 uh. You, you've done training, first aid training. What you look for? Airway and breathing. Mm -hmm. That's what? Signs of life. That's right. I mean, I'm going to save your life. <laughs> That's right. That's but right. If, if I hear, if, if I, if, if you go to a disaster scene, what the first thing they're going to do? If you're dead, they're going to, they don't kind of like walk by you. They out there looking for people, what they're looking for. Do I, do I see the chest moving? Do I hear the air? They're mm -hmm. looking for signs of life. And then they're going to, those are people working for, what about the dead people? Well, you can't get them more dead than dead. 
They're not being disrespectful at that moment, but they're trying to find people who have signs of life. And mm -hmm. don't confuse signs with some prophecy, some mandate from God, because people want to do that. But that's just that's fear, fear mongering is mm -hmm. what is what that is. And that's what people have people make have built churches on it. Yep. Kingdoms are, kingdoms are built on it. And, and and taking a Bible and justifying God with your fear mongering. That's right. That's, just, that's terrible. Yeah. And the the you know, when, when, when I hear, when I hear some of these preachers in the, in the way they talk about it, I mean, I remember, oh man, I, it was probably, I think it was before, I think it was before I went, before I deployed and there was this, there was this preacher and he, and all he, all he could talk about is how, uh, you know, this, this, this war in Iraq was, it's going to spread and then Russia and China and he started using revelation. And I mean, at the time I wasn't a believer and I'm like, this man's crazy. And and I still believe that even after all the theological education, I look back on that sermon and I'm like, that man was crazy. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't crazy. He knew exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He's peddling fear mm -hmm. to get, you know. I mean, if you're part of my church and you know you're paying that money, hey, right. you know, a little little fear never hurt anybody, right? Right. And that's sick. And that, and that's that's where some of the church is right now. They're, you know, they're there's money to be made off of it. And it's not just in combat. It's in the pulpit, yes. in, the, in the pews. There's money there too. So, um, you know, it's, just, it's, it's exceptionally irritating when I'm like, man, you, I can't believe you even look at it that way. And then, and then you're going to, you know, put your, put your pulpit, use your pulpit as a fear mongering uh, to terrify people um, into, into believing whatever it is you believe. And that's so dangerous. And we and we do that with a lot of things, but we, we we're talking about war tonight. Um it's it's just it's so sad, man. It's just it's so sad to watch churches do that. Um I find it I do find it interesting when when people are real quick, uh, you know, like you said, when we're real quick to spend the money on the conflict. But you have to understand when people come home, that's that's part of the paycheck, it's part of the payoff, right? You got to pay for that too, uh, and people don't come back the same. You know, I'm a very fortunate person. I have every appendage of my body I brought back with me, and I'm very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. um, but there there are definitely pieces of my mind that aren't coming back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's it's and and let me say this: I'm not. I'm not up here, you know, being anti, I'm not, I'm not anti-troops. I am the troops, right? Mm -hmm. I am a troop. I'm not anti-troops, but I'm very protective of troops, right? I'm a senior chief in the Navy. There's, I have one, my, my priority one is my sailors and, and they mean the world to me. So uh, yeah, I'm a little picky when we talk about sending them into combat. Um, so. Here's the issue, issue I have, you know, you know, and going back to the cap incident and things like that, I watch this and, you know, I see these people and doing this stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And you talking about, you're, you're tying to the word patriotism. You really tie that to war. Uh, you know, let, let me tell you something. Um, the numbers I put out, the people that's main, the people who are PTSD, how the VA treats, treats these people, how, the, you know, you don't impress me. You don't move me at all period one bit and this this outside of because i know people that, this had nothing to do with kaepernick just because you wave a flag and stand up for a song does not mean you're a patriot it's true because if i tell you to sit down if i tell you okay good you wave in a flag and you sit up for a song okay now put the rifle in your hand put the gear on and go down range, you are gonna sit down just like Kaepernick did. So miss me with that, you're a patriot because you stand up and wave the flag and shout USA, USA, USA. No, what, what makes you, we had presidents across parties have got draft deferrals. Yeah, when they get in office, they can make war. Mm -hmm. So we, we're very disingenuous. We, we're very disingenuous when we're talking about this subject because the people and all you flag waving people, 
Won't you get on the phone? Won't you get on the the uh, uh while yelling at the football game, the basketball game? Because that's not that's what thirty seconds, whatever that is. You sit down. Speak up for your veterans. Speak up for the truth that you said. You're so offended by this act. Be offended by the act that people, veterans like me and Bishop G, are not getting proper health care benefit. Be offended by the VA not taking care of it. Come on, the war that you that you love the truth. Love the truth by showing that when they have fought the war, when they've come home, when they've been there, show me patriotism by mm-hmm. standing up. It is it is a and I'm I'm gonna say it and I don't care. It is a sin and disgrace that this nation was allowed to change the 20 year military retirement, getting a check for the rest of their life. Let me tell you something. As somebody who's done it, if a person spends 20 years in the United States military, they should get a check to the grave. Period, point blank, in discussion. When the same people, you go up to Washington, D.C., spend a few years and get paid for the rest of your life, and the people who have been on the front lines, who are separated from families, who's lost friends, who suffered, bled in some cases, died, lost limbs, everything else. You, if they do 20 years, they gotta have a 401k? See, no. This this is this is not right. This is the point I'm saying. This is not care, this is not taking care of the people. This is saying, okay, you fought, you did it. Go take care of yourself now. You gave us 20, somebody gave you 20 years of military life. And you got and you and you got to worry about a it, no, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Particularly this nation, a nation who stays in perpetual war, a nation who 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 really never gets out of war. Always in some conflict, you can call it what you want: conflicts, wars, engagements, whatever you want to call it. We're always involved in something. This nation, and then you're gonna you're gonna take it away. But see, we allowed it. What was the flag waving waving then? Go down to D.C. and wave the flags in front of the White House and the Congress and say. We need to take out troops. Do it down there. You doing it at a football game or a basketball game or a sporting event? That does not move me whatsoever because that's just pomp and circumstance. It 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 is it's not doing anything for anybody. Yes, we love troops. You don't prove you love me because you can wave, you can stand up and wave a flag. You prove you love me by this word, by advocating for me and ensuring that the rights and the benefit and the privilege that we deserve, not not given, that we deserve and earn mm-hmm. or take care of. I'm speaking with people right now who suffer from things I don't suffer, and Bishop, mm-hmm. thank God, don't suffer. See, I'm going to always be advocate for this. This is always my because I've seen the, I, I, I've seen what it looks like. I've seen the zest. I, I've seen the tears, and believe me, standing up at a football game or basketball game. No, they want to, that doesn't move them. They want to see, they need the care. They need the treatment because they have, they have paid, they have showed the true patriot. See, a patriot means that when the flag waving stops and the, and the marches stop, you're out there on the battlefield, on the front line. That's right. Willing to That's say, right. more than wave and stand for a song, here's my life. Mm-hmm. I believe in it so much that here's my life. And that's a difference with a distinction. So that don't, I'm not, that don't impress me at all mm-hmm. what, 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 what somebody does there. We need to make sure that we, we, we take care of the people who are born um, these, these, in many cases, wars and conflicts that just totally was uncalled for, unnecessary, because we didn't make peace. Yeah. And the, the onus, and this this is another thing, another another drawback or something you can get out of both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Peacemaking falls to the Christian. Yes, that's our job. We are to peacemake. Now that doesn't mean that you know when 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 it fails and and the bullets start to fly, it doesn't mean you know I'm not a sinner for donning the uniform of the nation. Mm-hmm. Um, but we got to try everything before we get in before we do that. Um, there's there there's so much opportunity, and and I always like you know big war you know it's easy because you know the Iran thing happens or the Iraq thing happens or this happens, you know it's easy to get on the that that part of the war, mm-hmm. 
but we don't talk about the war at home. Yeah. We don't talk about the war with, you know, uh, veterans. And I mean, we have, we have a whole country, you know, filled with internal strife and Christians sit and do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we don't, we don't piss make, we don't, we don't peace make, we don't do any of that. We just want to sit on the fence and mm-hmm. just kind of hope it works out or some, somebody else will take care of it. Mm-hmm. If you're a Christian, you are not called to that. That's called a spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. And guess what? God did not give you a spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. You get you get peace, love, and a sound mind from God. He mm-hmm. gives you the tools to be able to speak for people who 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 are marginalized. So it's there's wars going on in here in, inside this country. Not not bullet wars, but there there's conflict here, and we want to peace keep. We don't want to peace make. We don't want to make any waves. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Well, I'm sorry. If you're wrong, wrong is wrong. Especially if you're in the pulpit. If you're in the pulpit and wrong is wrong, believe me, you're going to hear it from Bishop G. You're going to hear it from Bishop Williams. Especially if you do what we do. Yeah. But that's a worse, that's, that's, to me, that's a worse war. Yes. You, 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 you stand up at the football games and you stand up at these political events and say you love me, but you don't advocate for me. You don't, you don't fight for me. You know, the, the, the 20 year military retirement should be back. If I, I don't care if you sat at a death for 20 years in the United States military, you deserve that. That was the holy grail. That was the, you made it, you know what I'm saying? You, you gave two decades of your life to this country. You sacrificed, in many cases, your family sacrificed, put yourself in harm's way. And we're talking about now you got to depend on the 401k. I mean, mm-hmm. this is where we, we're going to. But see, y'all not saying nothing about that. And the, 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 what you're saying, the Christian conscience should always struggle. It always should be a struggle with the awful, the awful, um, the awful issue of war. Why? Because here is, here is the bottom line. I, I teach criminal justice. And if, 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 I, if, I, if I take your, if I take something from you or take you into custody, I got to have what's called a warrant. I got to have a warrant from a judge, a court of law that has jurisdiction over where you're at to take you into custody, to take possession of things. Mm -hmm. God himself and his son has not given nobody a warrant to conduct war in their name. That's right. You said, if you're conducting war, you're conducting war. But he hasn't gave you a warrant. He hasn't endorsed. He hasn't approved. Your war, he says, blessed are the peacemaker. Because as you read scripture, the peacemaker is wise. The peacemaker knows how to negotiate. Because here's the peacemakers. Why is that? It's not pacifism. Because sometimes pacifism, we, we don't understand. No, you, you, you just can't sit down. You got to work. Peacemaking is blood, sweat, and tears. Because you're working to make peace. Because you understand this, that there's humanity on the line there's Mm -hmm. innocence on the line when somebody i don't care who it is drops a bomb anywhere more people are going to die than just to attend their target yay we got our target but what about the little girl i got nobody now who had nothing to do with that who gets taken out by the shockwaves oh oh oh, i I wouldn't see that's what war is see see but if we made peace, the bomb wouldn't drop and she can go about her life. So I don't have nobody now. Mm-hmm. See, but see, peacemaking is work. War, it's hard. War is actually war is war is that you know what? We're just gonna kill each other. We we're just gonna see who got the most guns, who got the most technology, who got the most people that willing to die for them. Who's got the most troops? Who's got the most best strategy? Who's got the best generals? Who's got the best admirals? Who's got the best this? And we're going to fight it out. And then in the way, we'll see what happens in the way. That's what, exactly. that's, that's what war is. War is a failure. Anytime you go to war, anytime you make war, is because we have failed as humanity. And then, as you say, back home, we 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 man we applaud when they deploy we applaud we support when they walk in through the airport you know we applaud the troops but see are you making sure they're taken care of mm-hmm. you, the the numbers I gave you tonight you won't see it on the nightly news because nobody see that's not big business 
But guess what is big business? You know why these TV networks are salivating about this, this situation? Because guess what? You just said it, Bishop G. Guess what? Fear comes in, and guess mm-hmm. what happens? Eyeballs come on screen, and these people make money. These TV networks make money by these being on the screen. It's so true. now I'm going to turn on the news because we're at war again. Mm-hmm. But see, when it's over and they cut the lights on, everybody goes home. Nobody cares about the person who bore the burden. Mm-hmm. Of the, oh, we, we love it when the lights are on, when we have the game, when these conventions, we have to accept, oh, look at the truth. Yeah, get the flag on the football field. But see, it's in, it's, it's in how many of y'all, how many, I, I, I wish I could take a poll. I wish I could go to that football stadium with hundreds of people. How many of y'all ever went to a veterans hospital? I ain't talking about saying, like uh, King said, flicking the corner, but I ain't saying, hey, thanks for your service him in the airport. No, go to the VA. Go, mm-hmm. go to Walter Reed. Go to those places where they at, where the suffering and stuff at. See, then it gets crickets because you just you just want to put put and so we have a lot of show but the reason why i'm a big on peacemaker is jesus one jesus said it because i know personally you know personally the cost mm-hmm. is gonna pay and when the lights go down and when the when when everybody's quit yelling and screaming and the flags get put up and the song stop that person has to deal with no legs Mm-hmm. For the rest of their life. It's true. The war, they said it. The war may be, it, but it never ends. The war may be over, but some people left their legs in Iraq. And until they die, it'll never end for them. That treatment never ends. That that you don't you don't. It's not you don't. It's not a bad job. You get the next job. It it doesn't end. And that's why peacemaking has to be mm-hmm. the the number one duty yeah. of a Christian. You know, either we make peace or we rest in peace. That's right. So we got we got to figure it out. Yep, and it, you know we we owe we owe it we owe it to our community as especially as Christian leaders. We owe it to our communities. We owe it to uh, our families. We we owe it to our churches uh, to to peacemake. And like you said, peacemaking is hard. Yeah. Fighting, I, I'll tell you. I mean, I don't. I got to be careful when I say this. Fighting is easy, but it's not easy, like easy to do. It's easy to make that decision. Peacemaking takes time and it takes compromise and it's hard. Um, so it's usually not the best thing. And guess what? It's also expensive. Peacemaking is expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but until this is what this is what irritates me. You know, when it, there's a, you know, you got a community church. It doesn't really want anything to do with its community. Doesn't reach out to its veterans. Doesn't reach out to its disenfranchised, its poor, whatever they've got going on in their community. But we want to talk about war mm-hmm. or patriotism or you know or any of that. If you want to be a patriot, then do what patriots do: love your country. Yeah. That's what a patriot does: loves their country. That means loving your country if you have to fight for. It. That means loving your country if you have to take care of those who are wounded, hurt, it loving your country is, you know, helping someone who don't get the same treatment you get. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know that's hard for people to hear, but look, man, I get that, but it's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening is what is happening. Mm-hmm. I can't change that, but what I, I can try, you know, I can certainly try. And if you're not even willing to try, I, I gotta, I gotta call you out on that. Where's your fruit? You, you, what, you, what are you doing? You know, you know why people can't peacemate is because, and, and this is a great segue to this here, is because this show right here. You know why this show is happening right now? Is not because we agree on everything. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, it's a lot of things we don't agree on. But we're willing to talk about it. That's right. Instead of fight about it. And That's then right. beyond that, we're willing to say, you know what? different background, different circumstances, but a greater God than both of us mm-hmm. has called us for a purpose. So whatever we disagree with it, let's use that to help us grow. The problem with peacemaking, Bishop Bishop John, is because we don't see it in every area of life. Nobody, nobody 
wants to these people in the stadium and the media they don't care what happened against Nilla. they don't care they just saying they've just decided that he this they, they made their own determination and then the media makes their own determination and why and it's not about that but you don't care so we can't make peace so let's get rid of him get rid of his eyesore but in the end, the point to your point, it didn't make anything better. It didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to talk about it. You can still just disagree with the man and 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 um and and talk about it. Mm -hmm. I, I told my kids today. I I put it like I broke it down to them and really opened eyes. I said, you know what? Look at me. You think that I'm gonna get an invitation to the next Ku Klux Klan meeting? And you should have seen their eyes. We're These probably not. Years. I know probably. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Not gonna, once they see me, that's over. It's in the, just the skin. So, yep. but here, here's the deal. Here's what you don't want to hear. Not you, I'm people. Here's what people don't yeah. want to hear. Yeah. I fought for them to march as long as they right. do it peacefully. That's right. But the same people would say different about Kaepernick. Oh, when I say the Klan, you go along with that. Is it because you're white and that's good and that's America taught you? Or yeah. because, because he had a right. And then I say, well, you know, the argument, well, he shouldn't have done it in his workplace. Well, let me tell you something. Breaking news. <laughs> the media and Fox Sports and NBC Sports and CBS Sports is not going to come to your construction job <laughs> and when a national <laughs> anthem goes and see if you kneel. It's not going to happen. Right. It's right. called having a platform and being and, and saying, God, you gave me this platform and I'm going to put it at risk to bring attention to something. Mm -hmm. Peacemaking is about bringing attention, protest. And so, but we say we fall for that, but here's the problem. When people do something we disagree with, it we get back into the war making mentality. We want to fight. We don't want to listen. We want to argue. We want to dismiss them, disregard mm -hmm. them. We don't want to negotiate. We don't want to try to hear them. We mm -hmm. just want to dismiss them. And we wonder why we can't make peace because we don't. We just get rid of it. If 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 it if it doesn't meet our narrative, it doesn't meet what I was taught, my tradition, mm -hmm. my my way of it. I'm I'm, I'm not going to hear it. Yeah. You talk to Muslims? Yes, I talk to Muslims. Why would of I course. talk to Muslim? Why would I talk to Hindu? Why would I talk to a Buddhist? Why would I talk to do whatever? Why would I talk to somebody from the LGBT? Why would I talk? I, I talk to anybody. I I believe what I believe, but I because they're human beings. That's right. But see, we decide. We really we really turn the Constitution upside down because we say people have a right to do. But it's an amazing thing when people don't do what we feel they need to do. That's right. In that same constitution, we tear it up and say, well, he shouldn't be kneeling in the football game. Well, maybe not. But how about this novel concept? Why don't you go ask him why he's doing it? Exactly. Oh, it doesn't matter. No, yes, it does. It does matter. Because, see, my normal is not your normal. Mm -hmm. Just because you had a good father growing up, as, and just another example, I mean, I did. Right. So right. don't tell me it's normal. No, my, my, my life is my life. Go ask them anyone. But see, you don't want to deal with that because the media and society has already told you what to think. And so guess what? Mm -hmm. Let's find a way to get rid of it. And what we do, and that's what we're saying. We're just going to, let's just blow it up. That's right. Let's just fight. Let's just tear it up. And so we don't know that we, like you said, in the church, we don't practice peacemaking because the church, in many cases, when you go to those, they nothing but a bunch of divi like like you you know you know what I'm talking about. This is the squadrons, your division, my division, right? They're but a bunch of divisions, and mm -hmm. you know what they do? They make, you go in the military, you're doing this. You know they fight over territory. That's right. Like, like on the ship, you know, they, right. you know every everybody's in their corner fighting on the territory because this is my division. This is mm -hmm. my situation, and so we we practice this war making it. Talented, and we, and, you know, and it's and it just we don't practice peacemaking because we, yeah, we know how to fight. Yep. We, we, we have mastered fighting. Yep. And I'll say this you know, I think, I think one of the reasons peacemaking is so difficult is because at the end of peacemaking, there's compromise, there's mm -hmm. at a minimum an acknowledgement that things may not be the way that you think they are, and we don't like being wrong. We, we would we would sacrifice the peace to be right. And what that's called is might makes right. So what we think is, well, I don't want to peacemake because I don't want to I don't want to be perceived as weak or I don't want to be perceived as, you know, not not having the right answer all the time. So instead, I will violently oppose you and I will silence you so that so that I'm right. right. And 
that's why peacemaking is so difficult. That's why we don't want to do it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't like it when I'm wrong. Right. It's awkward. It's hard. It sucks. I don't like being wrong. But sometimes this may come as a shock to everyone. I'm wrong. Right. Sometimes I'm dead wrong. Right. But having the courage to to hear people when they want to call you on it, instead of just opposing it violently, instead and maybe do some peacemaking instead of some war making. You will be surprised how much better of a person you will become just hearing people out, just hearing what people have to say. And at the end of the conversation, we may not agree at all, but at least we can shake hands and go, I see your point. I don't agree with you, but let's try to let's make this better together. Why can't we do that? Well, because we don't want to be proven wrong. We don't like being wrong. And a lot of times it's not about being proven wrong. It's just about a, di- a different way. You know, at Cain ref- didn't sit down with his brother and say, you know what, as I said earlier, what, what did you do? Mm-hmm. Because jealousy rose up and he just destroyed him. That's right. And so we want to, and we think that eliminates what happened and you're still in the same situation. We, we don't, we don't want to sit down and talk to other people because maybe, maybe they aren't wrong. And just because I disagree with somebody, I need to be slow about saying that too. Mm-hmm. Because really, when we say we disagree, we really just don't understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. See, see, I love you. You love me. That's right. But I don't care how much time we spend around each other. I don't care how close we get. And we are mm-hmm. close. And I don't care. We get closer every day. Mm-hmm. You'll never know what it's like to be a black man. Fact. I'll never know what it's like to be a white man in America. It's okay. Yeah, it, it it just is what it is, and we get we don't always you said no I don't, just, I don't see color, but it, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, you matter. Do. Come on. It doesn't matter that you, you you can live in that dream where you want to. It's a it's a part of who we are. Doesn't mean I love it. it just you. My experience is my experience, mm-hmm. and so a lot of times when we say disagree, what we need to say is you know what, I don't understand what you're saying. Not because I don't have your experience. Mm-hmm. Because if you have my experience, you understand what I'm saying. Right. But I can now see from your point of view why you're thinking away because it's your experience. A lot of times when we say disagreeing, we talk about that's right and that's wrong. A lot of times right. we need to be careful with that because I, you, know, you, you can talk to a, a woman having a baby and I can say, well, this is, you know, I will never know what that feels like. That's right. And I can say, well, I can, what I'd like to tell my wife that I disagree with her that her that her epidural was painful. Who am I to say that? <laughs> I don't know how you felt. It, it didn't look as, for instance, she said, well, well, this birth was more hard than that birth. Well, from my perspective, what about foolish to say, well, it didn't look like it was this hard. Mm. Yeah. I, dis- I disagree that you were yeah. in pain. Yeah, well, you know, it seemed like more, but we got to be <laughs> careful when we say we disagree. Yeah. We just don't understand the experience. Mm-hmm. We, can't experience we can't experience everything. We don't know as Americans, what, and that's why we, we joke about this here at war, why we did make these memes. You know what? Because we don't know what it's like in America to live with any moment with a bomb dropping in your head. Mm-hmm. We, don't, we go around, we don't think about it. We got this great military. We got these great things around us. We, we, and so we don't think about these things, but life would be a lot different. We will have a different perspective of things where we say, man, at any time I'm in this country, boom, my whole life can be over. Mm-hmm. See, imagine living like that. See, yeah. most Americans, so, we so disconnected from man around town, we don't even think about it. Right. You always, you, you're protected. This is the United States of America. And so hand up, you can go, no bomb. I'm in this house right there. No, it, one no bomb drop on, on my head. Mm-hmm. And so when, when we say, when people say, first come to me say, that's from another country, that they scare the United States of America. First thing we want to say, well, I disagree. Oh. <laughs> you don't have that person experience. Mm-hmm. Because they might have seen their neighbor's house get blown up. That's right. You just we can't understand that because we don't deal with that. So th- this subject was good because yeah, it, it, we we have to. This is heavy lifting. We mm-hmm. got to understand that, you know, 
the wars and the and the and the and the, the, the greatest one we fought in this country, because I, I close how I began. It took, and you know, I'm, I'm thinking of Lincoln and what he went through and what he had to deal with. It, six hundred thousand people. That, that, that's come on, you more justification than that. Six hundred thousand people. Just imagine the the displacement, the starvation, all that went along with that unimaginable thing we can't consider right now to end slavery. So you have a you 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 have a long day, probably the rest of your life to convince me who study history, understand that, that it it really took six hundred thousand people in four years to end an ungodly practice. No, it didn't. Didn't have to. I'm bringing it home. Absolutely did Men not. simply just did not want to make peace. That's right. And because they didn't want to make, this is, a, this is the most American example I can give you. It's in the history, but I'm not making it up. You can argue all you want, but because we didn't make peace, 600,000 plus people got killed, for something we could have done by men coming together mm -hmm. and saying, let's just put down this evil institution. We talked about women, men still, all that kind of stuff. Let's just, we, we, we've we benefited from it. It's, we can't do nothing about the past. Mm -hmm. Let's drop it, yeah. get over with. South, you just gotta come up with a new form of, it's wrong in God's eye. Let's just end it. But we couldn't sure. do. Both sure. sides. They can told us both sides were praying to the same God. And they could not come to make peace. And 600,000 plus lives got destroyed. So you have a long day to tell me any kind of way that God wanted that. That mm -hmm. God gave a warrant for that. That God looked down on that and said, okay, this is great. No, it, it did. Because it, it, it was totally unnecessary. But why did it happen? When we're not pacifism meant we just couldn't make peace. And so mm -hmm. we're just gonna go and take up arms. Yep. And 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 so we have we we have a scar from that that we will always have to live with. Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing good from war. That's right. It's, it's a failure in peacemaking. And internally in the country, that's the ultimate failure. Yeah. Of peacemaking. And I'll I'll finish the way I finished or the way I started as well. God is not a god of war. God is a god of justice, plain and simple. God is not interested in human conflict that way. Now, sometimes, in the course of justice, these types of things occur. But we have as as Christians, Americans, whatever you want to say, we have to be very careful, especially as Christians, when we start claiming God is on our side. Oh, yeah. God is God is not on the side of war. God is on the side of justice, plain and simple. What, countries are going to fight wars. That's that's just we aren't we aren't peace. We are not a peaceful race in our fallen state. Right. Um, but God is not interested in your side. He's not interested in your merits or reasons. He is a God of justice, mm -hmm. plain and simple. You can take that how you want. Amen. That's good stuff, bro. Yeah, that's that was good. good. And we just. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget that we uh, the last few shows that we're going to do on uh, on Facebook Live. We'll be uh, going to very soon. We'll be going to YouTube. Uh, Bishop Brother Channel, please join. You don't want to miss the shows. You'll see us postings to here on Facebook Live. But we're mm -hmm. going to be moving the shows and talking about different topics and different subjects. And we'll continue to develop our battle, battle rhythm. I think we either got a uh, interview next or a a guest or a, a book review next, and we'll look at our battle rhythm. But mm -hmm. we're going to get a battle rhythm going that you pretty much know this time of the month or this quarter we're, we're dealing with and we're excited about the books we got coming up we got some great books we're going to be looking at uh really some eye-opening books we're going to review so we're excited about what god is doing we thank you for engaging with us tonight on this subject and um again you know we we, we really just talk about things that we need to talk about that you probably won't hear the pulpit but they're necessary mm -hmm. and uh, we just honored that you join us and tell everybody you know about the show and we'll be glad to have them enjoy engage in the conversation so we appreciate you being here with us
That's right. And uh, don't forget to hit up our uh, the website. Um, it's uh, Bishop Bishop Bros nineteen dot wixsite dot com mm-hmm. uh, forward slash Bishop Brothers. Great blog there. Uh, me and Bishop Aaron hit one up. Uh, we each do one a week, so you get. Right now, there's four of them up, um, and we just we we get on topics that the spirits told us to 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 get on, and uh, we really we enjoy writing them. You know, it's a it's a one or two minute read, doesn't take a lot of time out of your day. Uh, good little devotional for you. So, uh, looking forward to continuing to do that as well. Are you go post them on the page. Yeah, post them on the page. Uh, mm-hmm. so people click on those. Uh, yeah, we. I wrote about community, a little bit about community service this week, and mm-hmm. I got some, I got to see what you wrote about. But yeah, we we just trying to stay engaged with things like that. And if you ever have any question, you want to ask us, just post it on the blog, post it on our uh, Facebook post, our page, or anywhere, and we'll be we'll be glad to get with you and ask those questions. So we thank God for each and every last one of you. We just want to be a service to the kingdom and keep building the kingdom of God. Amen. Appreciate you. Till next time, we'll see you. We'll see you again. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Bishop Brothers. Make sure to visit our page, Bishop Brothers, where you can like and follow so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, please tell a friend about the show. The brothers salute you. Until we meet again, Godspeed. <laughs>